Welcome to the Strategy Mob Podcast. Tune in for everything you need to know to stay in the know regarding the automotive industry. Here's your host, Jason Harris. You have to know who your customer is, right? We, we, we can't market at the customer anymore, you know, where we're just throwing things out there and just hoping something sticks. We have to market to the customer. And to do so, we have to know who they are. And if management is going to continue to be in charge of marketing efforts, then that needs to be their mindset. Like the, their Definitely. mindset has to be, I, I need to market that at the person to that person. So I need to take the time to actually understand who the heck I'm talking to Ooh. and understand what's really important to them. I mean, look, well, look, guys, we know price is always going to be important, but mm -hmm. we, we've learned over the last four months and it's not the most important thing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's so funny. One of the, one of the, my favorite pieces of research I've ever been involved in um, from a consumer standpoint is when we ask consumers what um, value props that dealers message really stood out to them. You know, what drove them? You heard this message from a dealer. Did it cause you to select a dealer? And was it unique or differentiated? And that was the two questions we asked consumers. And one of the learnings amongst many was that sometimes as in auto retail, our marketing is tied to our own ego. It's tied to what we want to hear, I'm right? So we're we're in the that. car on the way to work and we're hearing that radio and we're like, ooh, I like hearing our dealership name on the radio, right? We see our ad and it makes us feel good and has nothing to do with necessarily what the consumer wants. And, and one of the examples, there were two different um, reasons for selecting dealer that we had on the survey. One was they were a family owned business and one was they were the number one uh, dealer in the area. Number one, four dealer, number one, accurate dealer. Those are common messages you hear, right? Dealers, you know, I've never heard anybody say long. number two. Number two, I right? Want some, I want someone to come out and do a marketing campaign. Because <laughs> who doesn't like a number good number two? two? And I, I, I hate to break it to you, but those two different reasons I mentioned were, were not very high on the list of why a consumer selected a dealership. And especially on the number one dealership in the area, it wasn't very unique. It wasn't something unique or differentiated. So here we are thinking that these are the things consumers want to hear, that I've been around this long, that we're family owned, and we're missing the point of giving them the real value prop of what we need. You've been around this long because you offer this value to consumers. And so I think, I think that's just an example of sometimes we fall short because we're really not solving consumer pain points. We're really emphasizing things that we, we think are, are important. You know, Carrie, I love all of that. The, the other thing as you're talking, when I, um, I was studying Google marketing a while back, maybe six months ago, and they really go into see, think, do, care. Most mm -hmm. of what we are talking to when we're marketing to customers um, as a, an automotive dealership, it's all to directly to the in-market shopper at that moment only. Mm -hmm. So you get the five alarm fires, ends today, you know, hurry, do this, do that. And you get that um, urgency, which nothing wrong with urgency, but you get this false sense of panic. And then if every day is a panicky day, then no day is a sales day. Like nothing is separate. So when we think about that, we think about like, what are the different places that people are in their shopping arc? And what is it about that dealership that's different? And so I would recommend 40% on urgency messages and then 20, 20, 20 on what are they thinking about um, uh, while they're looking for it? What do they do after they buy their car? What are the things that they're looking around for? So I would address that customer and I would still give the dealer autonomy to do 40% of their budget on the way they did it before. The other thing I would do, completely flipping the narrative here, is I would say whatever your current marketing budget is, is take 20% of the whole budget for two or three months and put that into building up your team and getting this whole process around marketing and communications and customer engagement right. Because if you invest that money in your team, they're the people that are the feet and the hands and the eyes and the mouths and the ears for delivering that message and bringing that experience to life. So for just two or three months, get a highly focused program in place where you're making sure that your people understand those marketing plays, understand how it benefits them, understands what the customers want to see, understands the different places customers are as they're looking. Then they're not upset when the customer doesn't respond in two or three days. They're like, ah, 
they're here on their journey and their journey is their own. It's not the journey that um, any of these companies showed us that they were on with these funnels. There's, they're in this circuitous journey. And I just need to like find out how to jump in the passenger seat or the back seat with them on the journey. And I need to be allowed permission to be with them on that journey by being mm -hmm. thoughtful and relevant. So those are my thoughts on marketing, uh, split that budget up a little bit, and then also make sure the team knows what's going on and really strengthen your team and their performance. Because at the end of the day, that's who's dealing, your customers are dealing with. And at the end of the day, sorry, bad news folks, they're still saying no, five to one over saying yes. Thanks for tuning in to the Strategy Mob Podcast with your host, Jason Harris. Don't want to miss new content? Be sure to sign up to be a mobster at strategymob.com to stay in the know. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Happy podcasting.